Thank you so much. So a very warm welcome to all of you who are joining us for this fifth International Cohorts Virtual Summit. My name is Michelle Ramsey, and I am one of the co-chairs of the IHCC. And today I'm speaking to you from the University of the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. So it's three o'clock my time in the afternoon. And I know for some of you, it's very early in the morning and for others already going into your nighttime. So this year, the theme of our summit is the following. The journey to globally accelerate science, diversity, and global health in longitudinal population studies. So just a little background. So the International 100,000 Cohorts Consortium was established in 2018, and its aim is to create a global platform for translational research informing the biological and genetic basis for disease and improving clinical care and population health. It is a global community of cohorts working together to advance science and to improve the health of all. We have several key objectives and, you know, just to put them into three phrases, it's about linking cohorts, it's about understanding biology, and it's about improving health. So we have specific um, values and guiding principles, and these are that we are truly an international consortium, that we do our work with integrity, and that we embrace diversity, which is really important when we're looking at global populations. We strive for equity, and we aim to act with audacity to make a difference. So just thinking about the IHCC in numbers, at the moment, we have 114 cohorts that are part of this extraordinary consortium, and they are spread across 53 countries. Amongst all of these, we have about 50 million potential participants. And these participants have a different breadth and depth of associated data. And some of the reg re some regions of the world, sadly, are very underrepresented or even absent from our consortium. So we have more work to do in terms of linking more cohorts to the IHCC. So to date, um, we have supported eight pilot projects. And these include many participating low middle income countries. And these eight pilot projects have published seven papers and currently have five manu manuscripts under review and a further 10 in preparation. So a very good investment for this consortium. But when we think about the accomplishments of the IHCC, these are worth noting. So first of all, it is about the policy resources that we have developed. And these include policies on data sharing, which is very important when you're looking at cross-border data sharing. It's about publications and fairness in terms of authorship. And then thirdly, it is about um, a policy document talking about partnering with industry understanding how very important our private um, public partnerships are in supporting the cohorts that are part of this consortium. So we have a five-year strategic plan, and essentially over those five years, there are four areas that we really want to focus on. So the first is that we want to generate impactful science. Secondly, we want to enable discovery and connectivity of cohorts so that we can increase collaboration between them and asking questions that are truly spanning the globe. Thirdly, we want to make it possible for all cohorts to contribute to the work of the IHCC and its scientific challenges. And lastly, it is about building this very strong governance and operational foundation. So we're bringing large cohorts together to encourage data sharing, improve efficiency and maximize benefits in addressing scientific questions that none could answer alone. And to do this, we have four working groups. Um, the first one is data interoperability and connectivity. The second is scientific strategies. The third is training, sharing, and cap capacity development. And the last one is policy and systems. And we're going to hear about all these working groups and what they have achieved and uh, what progress they're making, and then also how they're thinking about going forward. So this is all about addressing the value and challenges by combining large cohort data across borders. So um, our member cohorts aim to recruit a 1,000, 100,000 participants or more. 
They are generally disease agnostic and have available biospecimens and have longitudinal follow-up activities. Having said this though, we recognize that cohorts from underrepresented populations and in low middle income countries may not fit some of these criteria. So we make exceptions to make sure that we can also include them. So we're continuously looking for novel cross cohort scientific programs from our members. And every now and then we open a request for ideas and we hope that in 2023, we can have some sessions where we brainstorm what we want to do together for the future. So just briefly about our summit, and this is the fifth summit that we have and will be taking place over four days. And there will be a variety of activities, some fun things lined up um, to get to know one another better, but also an extraordinary platform where you will have an opportunity to, um, to meet people virtually and um, also have good discussions. So for today, which is day one, our theme is where are we now in this journey towards building a stronger IHCC? Tomorrow, day, uh, day two, the theme will be emerging data and industry perspectives for improving longitudinal population studies. And on day three, we're going to talk a little bit more about our challenges and best practices for large cohorts and also have sessions on lessons learned from low middle income countries or low resource settings. On the very last day, we'll have a slightly shorter day. And that will be um, a day to talk about, you know, where do we go to from here? And we're going to have a series of round tables, which we call a call to action. So on behalf of the IHCC co-chairs, Jeff Ginsberg, Peter Goodhand, and myself, we wish to thank uh, Scott Sunseth, the program director of the IHCC, and Chisholm Nwaneri, the program manager for the IHCC, as well as the other organizers of this summit um, for leading the development of this exciting and interactive program. And to all of you listening, we wish to encourage you to be active participants and to share your views, because we want to hear from you how we can make the IHCC more impactful. So without further ado, I would like to invite our opening keynote speaker. So today our keynote speaker is Dr. Stephen Quake. And he is head of science at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Steve oversees a shared comprehensive strategy across the science program and technology teams, as well as the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub Network and the Chan Zuckerberg Institute for Advanced Biological Imaging. So he has invented many measurement tools for biology, including new DNA sequencing technologies that have enabled rapid analysis of the human genome and microfluidic automation that allows scientists to efficiently isolate individual cells and decipher their genetic code. So Steve is also the Lee Otterson Professor of Bioengineering and Professor of Applied Physics at Stanford University. And he was an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute from 2006 to 2016. So Steve, we thank you for sharing your thoughts and experiences with us here at the International Cohorts Consortium. And now it's over to you. Please share your, your slides and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, it's uh, a wonderful effort you have at the IUCC, and we're very proud to support it at CZI. Let me share my screen. Oops, may I share my screen? Perhaps not. Yes, um, just one moment. I apologize. All right. I can say that in my own research before leading CZI, uh, I grew to appreciate the value of cohorts and for the translational work we did, it was incredibly important. And what you're doing here at a much larger scale uh, is just terrific. Um, okay, can everyone see that? Yep, you're good. Okay, um, I'll give just a brief overview of what we're doing at CZI in, in the broadest possible terms. And, and I'm happy to take any questions afterwards if there's time. Um, 
So the mission of our founders, Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan, cure, manage, prevent all human disease by the end of this century, which is an audacious, large goal. Um, it's it's uh, uh, one that uh, is going to be challenging to achieve, but having a century to do it um, uh, makes one think perhaps it's possible. And it's hard to imagine sometimes what gets done over the course of 100 years. Um, I'm really focused on the next 10 years. Uh, which I, uh, which I, I certainly will not be <laughs> the outer limit of what I'll serve here. Um, and in that period, Mark and Priscilla have decided that they want their focus to be on advancing research and developing technologies to measure human biology in action. Um, and it's in the decades after that, that the real translational efforts will happen. So the thought is that in the next 10 years, hopefully the work they support will lead to transformative discoveries that will change uh in in important ways uh what we're able to translate and our approach at czi uh as a science philanthropy is threefold um which we call build fund do um funding is grant funding of scientific programs globally to advance fields do is to support research institutes that do research uh, we found and support research institutes uh that do research that can't be done in conventional environments and build uh, is to build open source software that accelerates science. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a bit about each of those uh, in the next few minutes. So we, we think about this as a scientific ecosystem. Uh, within CZI, we have the grant programs team and the SciTech software team. We also have the institutes that I mentioned, of which there is the Chen Zuckerberg Biohub Network. I was the founding co-president of the San Francisco Biohub, uh, and that's now expanding into a nationwide and hopefully international network. We have the newly formed Chen Zuckerberg Imaging Institute, and we have the Kempner Institute for the Study of National Artificial Intelligence at Harvard University. Within the grant programs, uh, we have five broad areas. Uh, cell science, which has so far been largely focused on uh, single cell approaches to, to biology. Uh, we have uh, the neuroscience program, which has up till now been focused on neurogeneration. We have the imaging program, which is focused on imaging across scales. We have the science and society program, which is focused um, broadly on understanding rare disease, um, and which is not rare when you add them all up. Uh, and something like, I don't know, 5% of the world suffers from rare disease in one form or another. Uh, and we have the Open Science Group, which has been uh, responsible for trying to support efforts to accelerate science through open sharing uh, of results. And in that group, we are uh, one of the largest supporters of BioArchive, for example, um, to try to use preprints to accelerate science. Our site tech team, uh, at CCI is an amazing group of software professionals, uh, numbering uh, more than 100 people that span these broad areas of uh, product design, software engineering, data science, computational biology, user research, ex user experience research, product management, and such forth. Uh, and they have uh, brought to the world three uh, terrific products. Um, one of them is Cell by Gene. It's an open source tool for exploring single cell transcriptomic data set, and it works sort of hand in glove with our work in single cell biology in the cell sciences program. And uh, this is a tool that, for example, uh, at the SF Biohub, we used as a, a portal for uh, both analyzing our data and sharing access to it um, as we've built large cell atlases of different organisms, whole organism cell atlases. We have the Chan Zuckerberg ID, CZ ID program, which is open source software tool that helps scientists identify pathogens and metagenomic sequencing data uh, used uh, uh, in uh, dozens of countries around the world to potentially monitor for new uh, infectious disease outbreaks. And we have Napari, which is an interactive multidimensional image viewer in Python. Uh, with many thousands of users um, and uh, used uh, not just for biological imaging, but also more broadly, we contribute to that ecosystem and support that. At the SF Biohub, uh, we, as I mentioned, have been involved in building whole organism cell atlases. We've done this for a variety of, of organisms, human uh, being sort of the capstone, which we 
uh, published the first draft of a human cell atlas earlier this year. We call it Tabula Sapiens. And uh, it's a way to understand uh, how the genome is used and all the cell types of the human body. Uh, and all that data is freely available for the scientific community to use. But it was sort of the capstone of an effort that's been going on for uh, a half decade at the Biohub, starting from when we originally founded. We initially started with mouse um, and built a cell atlas of the mouse called the tabula muris, um, and then began to explore that uh, and the mouse biology, um, first in aging uh, and looking at natural aging, and then in parabiosis to understand accelerated aging and, re and rejuvenation. Uh, we helped the international community build a fly cell atlas, uh, which published earlier this year. That's a very important model organism, of course. Uh, and we have uh, also been involved in building a, a cell atlas of the non-human primate, the mouse lemur, which is found in Madagascar. Uh, and uh, several other things uh, along the way. Um, we've built a COVID tissue atlas, uh, and uh, I've been involved in making a bat cell atlas uh, as a vector for viruses, important to understand. And, uh, and what's underway right now is zebrafish, um, which we're calling Zebra Hub, and combines both transcriptomics and imaging. And these have been very widely used, um, something like at last count, more than 75,000 users of our portal. The data itself has been downloaded more than 50,000 times. And uh, these are the most comprehensive phenotypic characterizations uh, of these important organisms, providing molecular definitions of all the cell types. And based on the success of the San Francisco Biohub, Mark and Priscilla decided to establish more biohubs. The idea behind the first biohub was to create a research institute that would uh, help drive collaboration between Stanford, UCSF, and Berkeley on big projects that they wouldn't do on their own. Uh, and we've decided to kind of try to extend that model um, into other geographic areas by finding other cities with multiple great research universities who want to work together. Um, we, we've begun in the U.S. Uh, and uh, are hoping to have our next, it's been done by open competition over the course of the past year, uh, led in part by Amy Herr, the CTO shown below here. And uh, we're hoping to get the next one chosen early next year. Um, and there'll be more to follow after that. And we hope someday to be international in our scope. The Kempner Institute for Study of National Artificial Intelligence. This is at Harvard University, uh, funded by a gift by Mark and Priscilla uh, and led by Shram Kakad and Bernardo Sabatini. Uh, and uh, we'll just getting off the ground right now. Uh, we uh, had a chance to visit them uh, over the late summer. This was the space. Uh, busy getting renovated, and this is going to support wonderful research projects helping to understand uh, both artificial intelligence and natural intelligence and the, uh, and, uh, the deep intellectual connections between the two. In the recently announced Institute for Advanced Biological Imaging, uh, which uh, is going to initially focus on a grand challenge around cryo-electron tomography to try to image cells and their contents in situ, uh, we'd like to be able to identify about half the, uh, the proteins in a given cell um, and uh, develop uh, technological approaches that will accelerate throughput in this field by two orders of magnitude, making it possible to do in the course of a week experiments that used to take a year. Uh, and uh, we're very excited about that. You can see here our three founding scientists, David Agard, Clint Potter, and Bridget Carragher, along with Stephanie Adi, the program manager who uh, who's who uh, who had the institute as her brainchild. Uh, and that's just getting underway and we're hoping to uh, get that physically launched in 2023. Um, and I'll say that also uh, we have uh, uh, a commitment to help ameliorate the, uh, the challenges of underrepresented groups and, and their representation in science. We have a strong belief that expanding representation will lead to more innovative discoveries and uh, before I joined CZI, Priscilla and Mark made a $500 million multi-year commitment to support organizations and leaders who are advancing racial diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts across society, um, but within science in particular. And uh, we're a large portion of the overall budget at CZI and also proportionally of this effort as well. Uh, and this is something we look forward to, uh, to helping uh, continue to support over time. 
what you may have seen earlier this year, we've announced uh, a partnership to support uh, precision genomic health uh, at a group of four historically black medical colleges. Uh, and also we've announced the winners of our inaugural diversity uh, leadership program, support their research uh, of, of helping improve representation of young folks in science. Um, more to come on that front. So I think I'll pause there and I'm happy to entertain any questions uh, you may have and I'll stop the screen share right now. Thank you so much, Steve. That that's really fascinating. You know, understanding the depths and breadth of um, your institute, and you know, just how um, how much you're doing for the public good because the data and databases are available to everyone. Um, and I'm really excited about this last program that you just mentioned about you know increasing diversity and inclusion. And you know, for our cohorts at the IHCC, you know, that might be something to also be thinking about in terms of our further partnership with you. Um, I, I don't know if we have an opportunity for questions. I think we have a few minutes left, if I'm not mistaken. We have about three minutes. Um, so maybe I could um, ask you then a few questions. So, so Steve, um, can you sort of maybe reflect a little bit on, um, you know, your partnership with the IHCC and how you see this um, blossoming and growing in the years going forward? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, we're, we're very proud to be a partner. Um, and uh, we'll see what the future holds. Uh, you know, I've been in the seat now just for four months and uh, I'm still getting my bearings. I, I think we have the team rallied around this mission of measuring human biology. Um, and that's certainly what one does with large cohorts. Um, and uh, so uh, I'd say stay tuned um, and, uh, uh, and, and please do keep an eye on our various RFAs as, as we roll into the new year. And that sounds great, Stephen. And maybe just to ask you, um, are you open to conversations? Uh, because sometimes, you know, when the calls roll around, there's like a tight deadline and people feel that they haven't got their bearings. So is, is this a modus operandi for, for your institute? Absolutely, we're open to conversations, for sure. Okay, no, that sounds that sounds excellent. Um, so, so I think then um, we'll probably move into the next session, but, uh, actually, um, you know, just one, to... So sorry, we had an attendee question from the attendee side. They asked what, what were the universities that were funded? Which universities were funded in the uh, precision uh, medicine of the historically black medical colleges? Yes. Uh, Mahari uh, University is is, uh, uh, is one of them. Um, Charles Drew University College in Los Angeles is another. Howard University in Washington, D.C. And Morehouse in Atlanta, Georgia. And, um, you know, Steve, just recognizing those are all in the U.S., so you're open to funding universities outside of the U.S. <laughs> that also speak to diversity. Uh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, you know, in our science program more broadly, we're, um, uh, we're, we you're fund internationally um, all over the world. I forget how many countries, but it's a large number. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that goes for our diversity efforts as well. Great. Thank you so much, Stephen. To all the um, the people who are listening in from the IHCC, please do reach out. Um, I think these are wonderful opportunities for partnerships. And thank you again for sharing, you know, all the wonderful work that you're doing. My thank pleasure. You. And thanks for what you all are doing for science.